Boom. Awesome. We are live. Happy Wednesday. As you guys know, this is our Winners Wednesday, and we have the amazing Mr. Ruben Garcia all the way from Fayetteville, North Carolina, joining us. So um, Winners Wednesday, for those of you that may be new to this, we have a special guest an agent, top producer, team leader, broker owner joining us every single week, same time, every single Wednesday. And we really go over their best practices and things that they've done in order to be successful, things that you can implement as a real estate agent. Now, once a month, the second Tuesday of every month, we have JB and Ruben. JB, unfortunately, couldn't join us today due to a closing. So all good things. Um, and we go over a special topic. So if you have any special topics that you want to uh, pitch and have us talk about, then we'd be more than happy to. But today's topic, drum roll, is really a mid-year check-in. So we know that it's June 14th. And so I, you know, and Ruben and talking with a lot of agents, and I know that you do as well, a lot of agents are very discouraged this year because we all know that they just came off a two year high of absolutely the best environment to sell real estate with all time low, you know, interest rates, yada, yada, yada. And so agents definitely, for the most part, not all are not hitting those same production numbers as they were in the past. So with that said, you know, what I want to talk about today and really highlight is the mid-year check-in. How do you not just completely ruin the rest of the year where you can really, you know, take off and start to accelerate and hit those goals for the rest of the year? Because as you know, Ruben, real estate, we're very fortunate, doesn't operate in a 365-day year. We operate in a 90-day cycle. So it's not too late. So with that said, what are you seeing in your market? You have agents all over the country as well um, that, that you know, agents are doing to really ramp up their business. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, we have them in, uh, I think, 27 states right now. But, you know, what's interesting is what I'm going to say and what I'm going to talk about, is, it might be bittersweet because I think the sweet part is that you recognize that the market can shift. You, if you're newer in the business, right? It was great 2020, 2021, whatever. But now you know the market can shift. So this is the sweet part, believe it or not, is that you know that it can and it can go in the opposite direction that you're used to and, and happy about and boast about. It could go in the opposite direction. Uh, the bitter part is to be truly 100% prepped. And I'm, I'll tell you something here in a second. This is you should have been getting prepared a year ago or a year and a half ago, right? So that's the that's the bitter part. And, and, and but it's not people, too late. <laughs> but it's not too late. But most most people won't say that, right? They're gonna be like, "Yo, here's the magic pill, boom!" And it's like the reality is, a lot of us knew something was coming about a year and some change ago, and we already started working on it. So first things first, get get surrounded by people who who understand that, know that, um, like us or others, you know. But it it just that. Go go in that uh, go in that direction with people who who understand that that's coming. I say that to say, our personal team, our our, our short, small team here in Fabo, the numbers have went down. Okay, the overall team we're hitting an all time record this month. So what does that mean? What does that say? Right. So yes, one market may be down, or maybe you know, let's say I don't know, four out of ten but maybe six out of 10 are doing pretty well. So are you doing a good job of leveraging yourself and putting, your in that, putting yourself in that position where you can be an octopus with all these arms in different markets to make sure that you are uh, pivoting and you're able, to, you're able to shift and move with the market like a building that got hit with an earthquake. You're still allowed to move. You're still allowed to move with the waves. So that's the first thing that comes off my mind. It is bittersweet, um, but prep yourself with people who, who, who know that and, and wants to be or, or kind of wants to move in those type of markets and expand in those markets. I'll get into like the more of the, the, the chewable granule stuff, I guess. But I did want to just kind of like be transparent and open with that as well. No, I think that's great because you definitely have to be aware because I've been hearing for the last two years, agents putting all over social media, it's not going to change. It's not going to correct. It's not going to go down. And as an investor, I'm sitting here saying, mm, I don't know about that you know, what come, goes up must come down at some point, right? But I don't think we're necessarily having a fallout. We're just having a correction because it's been yeah. a very unrealistic market as we know the last two years. Um, and I know, Ruben, we've been coaching and training on this for years that now more than ever, 
agents need to leverage and diversify their business. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't put all your eggs in one market even, right? So leverage, I completely agree with you, is really, really important. I want to highlight a little bit on the mindset, which I know both of us are big believers on kind of working on the mindset first. And um, my husband, Hamoudi, was actually listening to a Grant Cardone, I think, TikTok yesterday, and I just happened to overhear it. And he was coaching and training. um, And I know you're a Grant uh, fan as well. But he was coaching and training some car salesmen, which I think this can apply to real estate as well. And and as you said, it's going to be a little bit bittersweet. It's going to be a little bit of a knock in the face and harsh. But he asked him, he said, if your kid got kidnapped and they said, go sell a car. So in this case, go sell a house. By the end of the day, do you think you would go sell a house? I think so, right? I know you've got you've got kids, Ruben. I mean, somebody came and, and put a gun to your head. I know this is very, very, very dramatic. Would you go find a client by the end of the day? Yeah, of course. You would do anything that it took. So sometimes we have to kind of affiliate that pain to it of I have to do this by the end of the day. And there's absolutely no option. So maybe that was a very dramatic approach. But I think when in terms of doing a mental check-in. I think we have to look at our why and attach that why to emotion, but then also look at the numbers. When I talk to real estate agents, very rarely am I finding out that they have consistent efforts in terms of continuous prospecting activities every single day. So, you know, I always recommend the power hour, one hour, two hours a day, uninterrupted, consistent efforts that you absolutely have, like you shut the door, nobody can interrupt you and you absolutely have to prospect. What kind of advice are you giving your agents right now in terms of prospecting? Because the activities we know you do now are going to affect the third and fourth quarter of this year. Yeah. You know, this is something that we just had, we had to be more training. And then afterwards we actually, uh, I met up with a few agents and we were talking a little bit about this And I was like, you ready for the bomb? You ready to really figure this out? He was like, yeah. I was like, it's the same boring thing I said in the beginning of the year. We're going to run comms. What is comms for anyone who's late to the party? C, go back into your community. I've done that. I I don't just say it. Like, we actually do it. So what does going back into the community look like? If you have a downtown, if you have a local downtown, if you have business owners, go out there and do a video with them. We started it. We started a YouTube channel called Find Fayetteville, and we started doing that. There's some back-end stuff we're doing with the community, but that's helping us get more acclimated with the environment, the real environment that's going on in your community. It's huge. So go in there, rub elbows, show face, get a, get, get a little dirty. It's time to get a little dirty, right? And all this, there will be plenty of there, you doing that, 15, 20, 30 agents won't do it. Right. So there's huge opportunity in just that alone. Community, community, community. And Sebastian shows up to our Monday masterminds, jumps on videos. So like he he's there as well, but he's putting in the small, that small, those small steps every single day that will grow to be something pretty cool. And then the O is open houses. Raise your hand if you're doing open houses. Raise your hand if you're having your team do open houses. Raise your hand if you're 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 finding leads just to do an open house. Like Open houses are huge. I was just talking to an agent yesterday who's interested in working with the team in Georgia. And that's how she's finding her leads right now because the culture in her firm isn't the best right now. So she's finding other ways. She's asking other agents uh, to do open house with for them. And it's working on the sales side as well. And the M is meet. Go meet. Go back to your circle of influence or your sphere of influence and start start meeting them. Start again, rubbing elbows and, and actually talking with them. How's their life? How's their kids? I'm tell- and, and don't go with go, not do not go with any agenda. They'll smell it from a mile away. Just have mm-hmm. a conversation. Those three things have helped us. Like I said, all time records. We have the whole team talking about this. Now, you know, 80, 20 rule, about 20, 30 percent are probably actually like executing on all three. But heck, maybe we have more doing two. Maybe we have more doing just one. But they're taking active action in one of the COMs or the comms play that we're doing this year. So. There's your play, guys. If you're falling behind, look at your calendar. Where can you add more community events? Look at your calendar. Where can you do some open houses? Do two this weekend. M, meet. Try to meet two people next week that's in your uh, sphere of influence. You do that every week for the rest of the year, 
Brother Ruben's telling you, you're going to be okay. I promise, man. But you got to put in the work, right? Because if you're not, there's agents like me that are out there doing it and taking your market share. So well, thank you, Brother Ruben. I love it. I love it. Um, and definitely give a shout out if you like what Ruben is saying. You know, if you've got any questions, please put it in the comment section and give us a little bit of love, like, heart. Um, but you're absolutely right. You mentioned consistency and compound. And when I think about, you know, Darren Hardy's book, The Compound Effect, right? Sometimes we look at these bigger producers and all of a sudden they look like an overnight success, but it, they haven't been an overnight success. What it's been is the little nuggets and things and wins that they do every single day. Some days are small, some days are big that compound over time. And, and I love that you mentioned getting into your community open houses. I'm here to tell you guys, you know, I'm running my production team now back in Oklahoma city. I work virtually and we're running a lot of ads right now. And I, to be honest, Ruben, I am getting more leads than I even know what to do with. I'm referring out like crazy. So there, as Ruben said, if you're not going to do it, there's market share to be had right now. And so um, sometimes we got to get, uh, wait, what did, what did I want to get the home dealers? I love it. Uh, awesome. By the way, Ruben has his own online store. So we'll give that plug here in just a little bit. Um, so kind of shifting that mindset that there's not any business to there is so much business right now that if I can own that mind share, I can own that market share. And the reality is a lot of agents, the 80, 20 rule that Ruben just mentioned are not going to put in the work. So this is the time to take market share. In my opinion, that's what I'm saying. This is the opportunity. It's bittersweet. The, the sweet part is knowing that you can get punched in the face. That's the opportunity The op, with every obstacle. There's an opportunity. And there we go. There we're, we're good at it. Um, Allie just did a, uh, uh, she did two things, two that I've noticed. One, she just did a, a reel. So if you're not following Allie, follow Allie. But she just did a reel where some university did a research of cold calls. So she broke down the math. Well, the math was broke down, but she delivered it because I wasn't going to read that article. And she delivered it in a way in 15 seconds, which basically, if you do about seven hours of cold calling, you can get one lead. So she was like, spread that across a week. Now you're getting one listing, one buyer a week. If you just spread the seven hours between, if you do an hour a day throughout the week, you're good to go. So there are ways, there are opportunities. And you've got alleys out there in the world who are researching, finding the data and executing. You could do it too if Ali could do it. Not, not that, you know, Ali, you're the best. I'm not saying, you know, like. Ali's a rock star. We'll give a yeah, little point yeah, yeah, yeah. for Ali. Yep, <laughs> exactly. And then, uh, oh man, she did, she did a second thing that now I cannot remember. It was on a podcast. I remember I was going with her podcast thing be more show but dang it never mind i lost it i lost it i'm sorry it went bye bye no, it's okay. well i think ali you know she's asking about running ads so um i do a lot of property booths through kv core um doing a lot of facebook advertising right now google ppc zillow so just a little bit of everything to be honest with you ali i'd be happy to collaborate with you on that um i'm generating leads all over the state of oklahoma again we go back to leverage and delegating and diversifying I'm not generating leads in one market. I'm, I'm generating leads all over the place, even places that don't even have team members. Uh, of course, a way to build out the team there. So yeah. I don't think we have to limit ourselves. Nope. So what I, I remember I was going to say about Ali with her Be More Show uh, uh, podcast, she had, a, she had one of our agents uh, named Raul on, Raul Medina. And he is a capper and he's going to hit icon. I know he is. He's also an investor, which that's a conversation of shifting markets. Hey, we like to talk that we like to have those investing conversations. But he does mailers. He just started this mailer campaign to get more sellers. He's like, hey, listen, I'm going to Australia for like, I don't know, three months or whatever it is. He's like, I, it's forcing me to learn how to run a business, highly leveraged, not being in country. He does have agents who can execute those deals for him, but it's like, what's the most highly leveraged thing? We know that's listings. Allie, close your ears because she actually gets paid more on the buyer side when she broke down her math. But listings are highly leveraged, right? So he's marketing. He's putting money towards that that ROI of hitting certain neighborhoods of just Mellers. Matter of fact, I was like, yo, when you get back from Australia, fill me in. Fill me in because I, I want to get more into that too so you can learn from your own agents as well. But again, mm -hmm. There are agents who are executing, capping. These are effective, active, uh, successful, however you define success to be, agents who are executing on the things we're talking about right now. The only thing that I would add to that is when you do, when you go meet, when you do go into the community, when you do go open house, 
attach the SM to it, the social media aspect. Got to attach it to it. So you go to the bank, you have a conversation with somebody, do a quick video or a post and make that real estate on the internet. So that way your 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 meat is is it's exposed and it's and it's uh if you talk about something cool and it's uplifting, I'm telling attach a social media aspect to it every single time because that's gonna continue to tell your story while you're off doing the next open house or whatever that looks like. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I think that's that's really great. And so Ruben, kind of back to the numbers. Um, if people are like, okay, I get it. I know I need to get involved in my community. I know I need to reinvest back into my business. I know I need to go to do some open houses. I am just stuck. Like, what do I do today? How do I make sure like maybe last year I sold $4 million and this year I've only sold one house so far. Um, what, what's next? What do I do? What do I do uh, today? Yeah, I think the first thing, this is more of a one-on-one. And so I'll go what I would want to say and then I'll go broad. Um, but what I want to say is awesome. It, 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 I would love to see your calendar. Can I see your calendar? Would it be okay if I see your calendar? Because if show me your calendar, I'll show you your results, right? Like, don't tell me you're not hitting results if, if, if your calendar isn't filled with what we call standing tall, T-A-L-L, time, activity, location, and leverage. I want to see it. Tell me that after I look at your calendar, because I bet that's that's one of the first issues. You don't want to see my calendar today. It's back to back to back to back. That's cool. <laughs> We've got nine meetings slash appointments, including this one. And uh, I'm on time and I'm ready to go because my calendar says who I should be with, what we're going to talk about, you know, the whole thing, whatever. You, you, you all understand calendars. Um, if you don't, go to our last Be More training. Allie broke down her calendar, which was great. Allie's just the superstar. She, need, she might need to be on a winner's Wednesday trifecta or quadruple thing because we're very pretty Yeah, well. why not? Allie, I mean, she's been on winner's Wednesday multiple times, but yeah, she might just join our monthly. Uh, Allie, you're getting recruited over here. I know, right? Um, her counter is crazy too. But uh, the broad thing is, you know, maybe you need to sit down with yourself and ask yourself why you're in this business. That's what you might need to do. You need to ask yourself, you know what, if I went to four to only sell one house or I am on the decline, why am I even doing this? Because mm-hmm. somewhere along the line, uh, somewhere along the way, you lost the the output, the the extension of output that you need to put in in order to get a result. And I'll say this: when the pandemic first hit, and then it went down, what's the first thing I did? I went back to my numbers and I said, "Man, what are my conversions these days?" What it told me is we needed to do four times the work <laughs> to get the same result. I was at the kitchen table from day. Till night, putting in the work. And we hit all-time records that year. But the numbers told me to move forward. But what did I do? I remembered why I'm even doing this, right? Like, what is this funding? And I was like, oh, it's work that that puts me in place from now to where I need to be? Okay, cool. I'll just do that then. And that's what it took. So for you, what we'd have to do is look at your calendar, find out your conversions. If you don't know them, then we're going to guesstimate them at a 50 to 1. And then we're going to back it up into your calendar and give you the activities, COM, C-O-M, and also at Shareholder Summit, which I like. There's this dude. His team's killing it, right? And he broke down four things all his people have to do, which I would love to add into your calendar. What are we doing passively to, to, to get income? What are we doing actively to get income? How are you touching your circle of influence? And how are you telling your story on social media? So then we would look at these four things. And plug that into your calendar. The circle of influence would be some of that lead generation stuff, the op, the open houses, all that. But I guarantee if we just got that, or if you're listening to this and you're just writing this down, just what I wrote down, look at that, and then look at your calendar, and then plug those into your calendar. You win. <laughs> there you go. And, you know, honestly, Ruben, I think Glenn Sanford said it best several months ago when we did that exclusive interview with our group is he said, now more than ever, you need to go back to the foundational skills. I don't care if you've been in the business two years or 20 years. Yep. Something that I think both of us are implementing in our businesses right now is we have to take that mental shift. I know you sold 10 million, 4 million, 20 million last year. But this today is not last year's market. So number one, we got to get that out of our head, right? Things have changed. Number two, how are you going back to those foundational skills? So 
I'm teaching a, a five week series of CE classes for Oklahoma, which is one of the states that I'm licensed in. But like Monday, yesterday, yep, Monday, today's Wednesday. Uh, Monday, I taught, you know, your business plan, how to create a bulletproof business plan. Today, we're going over how to be a script master. So I had agents that have been licensed for 19 years on those calls. And they're like, I needed this refresher. I need to go back to the basics because what I've been doing the last 24 months is not going to work moving forward. So any advice that I can give is it doesn't matter how long you've been in the business, really dissect your business and go back to those basics. And take 8% listings. I'll also say, um, you know, one thing I love to do is listen to newer agents and their ideas of what uh, they want to do in this market, because we do. And that refresher kind of refreshed my mind on that is that we do, we do, we, we build something and we're like, yo, this is the play, which it may be very effective, and if you hear what a newer agent has to say, they're, they don't know what they don't know. And th some of those ideas are so cool, man. So don't, don't think that newer agents aren't, you know, they're going to be the one, like all the newer agents got their license because it was easy and they're going to get flushed out. Listen to some of them, man. Listen to some of them because they've got great ideas as well. So I'll say that too. I think some of our next top producers are people that aren't, aren't even licensed yet. Um, I've over li lived by this philosophy that I learned years ago from Tony Robbins. If you want to be creative in your industry, go ask somebody that's completely unaffiliated with your industry. Because sometimes when we've been in the industry for a long time, it's almost to our own detriment, right? Because we're so used to doing things a certain way. So I will actually ask advice for people that are not related to real estate at all, just to get some outside opinions and, and some different, um, some different creative ideas. That's what the, the going back to your community and the meet does, because when you go back to your community, you're meeting more than likely business owners or people who run nonprofits, but understand strategy and, and systems building. And y'all are going to get in those conversations. So you can pull some really cool stuff from a, a totally, you know, I want to say vertical business, but it's not the opposite of a vertical business, like just way out there in left field and pull some stuff from it. But also the meat, you have friends who are that that may be working with a company and now that company's doing something different. And you're like, oh, man, that's I like that. That's how they're keeping their people like they're doing that now. Like it's you can pull all kinds of that. So, yes, what you just said, and it ties right into what we've been talking about. You just need to add it to the calendar and start reaching out to people. I love it. So community, calendar, look at your calendar. So if you don't even know where to get started today, go look at your calendar. If there's a lot of white space, okay, how can I fill this up? Not with busy work, with productive work. And so that's the biggest difference. Um, yep. Ruben, just as we kind of wrap up here, is there any other advice that you have for real estate agents here in the kind of the mid-year check-in? Uh, I always go to it. Huh? I was there, and I think somebody wanted to know where you got your shirt. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll give it to you in the comments. It's yeah, it's one that we have. Um, by doing a go back into the community thing, this perfect tie in going back to the community thing. I did a video with a local tattoo artist, which he is amazing, by the way. And he rocked a t shirt. The video isn't out yet, but it will be. And it's called Ink Diller. He had Ink Diller as a t shirt. And I was okay. like, okay. I'm doing home dealers, right? So this is what I'm saying. If you just meet, you're going to have different ideas and the whole thing. So boom, come out with a t-shirt about it. But for things to, uh, man, I would say just get, I don't know. I, I want to say get out of your house, go back into the community, actually shake some hands. One thing that we'll do, like if you're moving into a different place in terms of like, you're just not sure you go into a, a building or something like this. Go in there and put a number in your head of how many people you're going to reach out to. And you talk to them until you you hit that number. Once you hit that number, you can leave. So it's five. If it's one, if it's two, if it's three. And you're going to go and you're going to introduce yourself. No agenda. Hi, hey, how are you doing? I'll say that, man. I think you just got to get back out there. I think we're just in that economy right now where you have relationships. And maybe it's always been this way, right? But it just got too easy. Leads were just falling in our lap. Well, and COVID changed the belly to belly a little bit, but we're back, right? So, yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm excited that we were talking about this a year ago, and that's where I go back to the bitter part. There are ages like us. So surround yourself with the circles that that have been talking about this for a while and look like the black sheep because nobody wanted to listen to it and ignored it. So uh, just go back out there, just talk to people, 
simple, man. It's simple. Go back out there and talk to people. Yeah. And I think be willing to do something different. You know, we all know that change is not easy, but if you, you know, there's a saying that if you do what you've always done, you're going to get the same results. Right. So um, I know for me personally, I've implemented a lot of different things that frankly I didn't want to do before, but I realized that it's necessary. So, um, you know, it's, it's getting out of your comfort zone and being willing to change and do something different. How do you start this, this would be good because I'm like, go out there and talk to people. Well, how? So how do you start a conversation with somebody when you're out and about and say you put that goal in your head, two people you need to talk to, you randomly talk to one because they engaged you because you were rocking one of Ruben's T-shirts. But the second one isn't. How do you start a conversation with somebody? Well, I'll give you a conversation I actually had last night. Now, this was not a physical conversation. It was a lead over the phone. Um, but, you know, it's simple. Like I, I called this lead up uh, and, you know, I, I said, hi, this is Mike with EXP Realty. Uh, I noticed that you had some questions on a property that catch you at a good time. And she's like, oh, yeah, but I'm cooking dinner. I'm making a cabbage dinner. I was like, ooh, cabbage. That sounds good. Do, do tell. And then she went into exactly how she was making her dinner. And the entire menu. And what happens is because I had started that and not from a sales perspective, I built that rapport and that trust with her instantly. Right. So I didn't make it all about business. And I do that often. So um, I always, you know, back to your acronyms, I always do the CIA, which is number one, compliment them. Number two, have some kind of icebreaker. So, you know, making a comment on her cabbage stew was an icebreaker for me. And then, of course, if you do that right, that will lead to the appointment. So I think that could very well um, play into a real life conversation as well. Yeah, you hit it. I was going to say the one of the best ways I was watching a video on this uh, yesterday uh, to engage in conversation is a compliment. So mm -hmm. it, you hit right on it. And they were showing like people who do it and they would hit with like three compliments like, hey, what? And it could be so much so like calling that person a sir or there's some respect to that right. person and it's like how can you pull off those shoes but i look ridiculous when i do it right showing that they're, <laughs> you know like that type of uh they're, they're crushing it at whatever it is you know and, and it's just a good way to be a good human too by the way like just go out there and make people smile i made someone smile today at the bank i didn't know that until mm -hmm. the teller told me but uh because one of the people um but just go out there and do that's it go out there and be a kind person compliment that's how you can do it kind and compliment Go out there, do it. I, and I would add to that, don't be a secret agent, right? Don't be afraid to let people know what you do, but not from a salesy perspective. You know, don't go up to everybody that you know. And do you know anybody looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? That's old school. Don't do that, in my opinion. Just lead with value, build rapport, but also let people know what you do. And then how can you add value to them. And if you know what problems they have and how you can solve those problems, then you come from a completely different perspective. So um, nobody wants to be sold. My guess is you as a real estate agent, you don't like to sell. So stop selling. And if you yep. do it this way, as Ruben and I've talked about today, then you will never sell again, right? You'll do it from just as John said here, the service attitude, service mindset, and as Tony Robbins would say, it's 80% psychology and energy, 20% strategy. Yeah. You know, and I go right back to the Be More uh, show with uh, Ali and Shelby. And Ali, when they were talking to Raul, he said he's hitting all-time records, by the way, right now in this market. Okay. And he said the thing that centers him, every listing appointment he goes on, he gets out of the car and he takes a deep breath and he says – all right, how can I just help them? I'm just here to help them. Is it real estate? Perfect. If it's not though, and they're going through some other challenges in life, how can I best help them? That's his only goal. He goes in there. How can I best help them? Real estate or otherwise. And that's how he, 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 he obviously gives that out and says, you know, that's one of the big things that has helped me hit all time records is, is just finding out how do I help people, period basics. I love it. So I think today's theme was going back to the basics. Back to the, ba back, back to the <laughs> basics. That's right. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Ruben. We appreciate you and your expertise as always. Um, please share how people, whether it's live or recording, how they can get in touch with you on social media. 
proven by Ruben on everything. That's it. It's normally on your name. It's not on your name today. No, I took it off. You know why? Everything's strategy, right? Like I think through things. But you know why? Imagine <laughs> it come out to right here. It's say right. Ruben Garcia and then proven by Ruben. Then it starts to cover up half what I'm wearing today. So I yes. noticed that on the last one, so I cut it down. There you go. So we'll just see it on your shirt. Proven by Ruben. Ruben, 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 Ruben. Awesome. Well, thank you so much as always. And if you guys are watching this, please comment. Um, let us know what your takeaways were for today. And then, of course, if you have any topics that you want us to cover next month, go ahead and let one of us know. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.